have approval of the minutes from the February 9, 2021 uh, meeting. Those minutes were supplied in your packet. We have a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Motion by Wayne Taylor. A second by Mr. Mitchell Stone Cipher. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to carry. Uh, number five. Any uh, additions or deletions uh, to tonight's proposed agenda? Anybody have anything new to add? Uh, and number six, the approval of uh, tonight's meeting agenda. I'll make it. Motion by Rick Dodson. And a second, Mr. Mike Gilpatrick. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? our executive action items. Uh, number one is consider approval of school-based behavioral health liaison. Uh, there was some information that's supplied in your packets. This is no cost to the district and I'm gonna have uh, Dr. Holman touch on that real quick. Okay. What this is, is uh, again, it's called the school-based behavioral health liaison. Uh, and this program is part of the expansion of, of Governor Lee's and it's to help address mental and emotional needs of students in our community and in various communities uh, throughout the state. Overton County is one of the 20 counties to be selected as part of that expansion here in the Upper Cumberland. And this liaison will be provided through volunteer behavior, the volunteer behavioral health care system. And again, as, uh, as Jarvin said, there's no expense to the county for that. The only thing we had to provide was uh, a space for them to work and uh, and uh, they, they will be housed out of Livingston Academy and uh, and no expense to the district on that. And there's a, in the packet of information that I've provided you all, there's a, there's a great deal of, of good things that they can, ben that can benefit our students. And one other thing, it really won't just help be helping the high school students, that could, this person could go down to the elementary schools at times and help as well. Uh, well it could help really any, any student in the district. Okay. Uh, I plan on going over all three of these before we make a motion on this uh, executive action items. Uh, number two is approval of the 2.0, uh, what we call the ESSER plan and budget. Uh, right now, uh, this was not supplied in your packet, guys. Uh, this is not a actual budget that we have to vote on. Dr. Holman just want to touch base and give everybody some information on uh, the money that uh, would be spent, where it would be spent. Uh, we will have to vote on those items as we uh, purchase and spend money. Uh, but right now we're just going to touch base, uh, let everybody know where this money's going. Yeah, like you said, I just wanted to go over and give everybody an overview of how we were spending this money. And I've already met with, uh, of course, the, the supervisors have helped tremendously with with this expenditure, and uh, and I've also met with all the schools, and I've gone over this in great detail with each of them, and I wanted their input in on uh, spending this money. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is we are allowed to get reimbursement for the subs that we've had since COVID began, which is a wonderful thing, because that was an expense just on the district. Uh, so we're being able to be reimbursed for that. We are purchasing um, lots and lots of curriculum material for our students. A lot of the CKLA material, uh, or K-8, math, all the math, there's different math curriculums, but we're purchasing those K-8 as well. And also math for the, uh, for the high schools, nine through 12, we're purchasing math. Also, we're, we're spending a, a good little handful of money there on calculators as well. Because there's different calculators that are uh, for, different, uh, for different age level students. So we're, we're trying to make sure we have what we need on that. Um, another big, big expenditure out of that, and again, this is $2.7 million. So another large portion of that money, uh, the way we have it in our mind now is over, over half a million dollars will be toward education technology, and that will be uh, student devices. Uh, in the past, we've always used Chromebooks, and we intend to buy uh, lots of Chromebooks here as well. But we're also going toward another device called a Surface Go, 
which the teachers have found that those surface goes really, really work, especially well in the math classes. So we're trying to get started uh, starting those in our school systems as well because they are much more friendly for the math curriculum than, um, than the Chromebooks. So we're trying to purchase quite a few of those. Uh, E-rate upgrades and the infrastructure with E-rate, we're uh, wanting to put some money toward that. That will help the uh, technology and the networking in all the schools. Um, I've spoke with numerous other districts in the area, I've heard uh, when I uh, listen to these web webinars and uh, and these meetings that I go to with the other superintendents, I'm listening to how they're spending money, and I'm trying to get the best ideas that I can and bring that back over in the county. And and one is improved air quality, better air quality, and clean air, and so forth. So we're looking to spend quite a bit of this money also toward the HVAC mm -hmm. systems in our in our school systems, and that's a major blessing for us because. If you'll think back to 2001, you know, it's 2001 when we had the large building program. There was lots of air conditioners, new air conditioners put in at that time. Well, we're thinking, what if all of those air conditioning units went bad at one time? What would we do if they all started, as for lack of a better term, fizzling out at one time? So we're trying to get a schedule developed of replacing so many per year, and this is just a head start on that. So we're, we're tickled about that. Also, let me say this, before I, before I looked into spending that money, I asked uh, uh, Ed Walker, who, who knows a lot about our uh, uh, heating and ventilation system, and I asked him to give me the areas where the most need was. So we are looking at that first. Also, I met with uh, Mr. Hayes uh, because he had done so much work with uh, Johnson Controls, and he had the information about all the heating and air units in the whole district. So. What we're doing is we're trying to replace those of greatest need first, the ones we think will go out first. Um, one other large expenditure of this money, to be honest, it's actually 12.26% is uh, indirect cost, and that's a requirement that we spend 12.26% of the 2.7 million on that. So we've got that, we've got that in the uh, in the plan as well. And what I've told the principals is, when, I've, when we've looked into spending this money, I've done my best to make the money spread all across the county. Um, I wanted all the schools to be getting certain things. Uh, and for instance, those curriculums <clears throat> are way up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's gonna help every school. And most of everything I mentioned will be helping every school. So. Any questions on that before we move on? Number three, approval of an open bid, uh, $10,656 from Douglas Equipment. Um, we approved a bid uh, December. Yeah, December, uh, which was the lowest bid. Unfortunately, by the time our uh, board meeting rolled around uh, from the bid they submitted, <coughs> that bid was no longer valid. So we had to take two bids. Uh, the, the price difference in 2021, it went up by $300 from their last bid, which is still the lowest bid. Uh, it's just something we have to have. Um, no way around this one. Uh, any questions on that? It, it's the same of the same details are the same. It's just the, the bid they submitted expired. Uh, our executive action items, do I have a motion to approve those? Motion by Mike Gilpatrick, is there a second? Second by Mr. Ashton. Is there any in discussion? Second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Executive action carries. Uh, consent agenda. Uh, we'll go all those real quick. Um, all these revisions, uh, we have a 20, uh, 20, 2021 Carl Perkins revision, uh, consolidated administrative revision, the Title II A revision, uh, a 1A revision, and the Title V revision, uh, IDEA Part B, and the IDEA preschool revision, and a approval of uh, general purpose budget amendment number two. Uh, all that stuff was supplied in your packet as well. That's just a reorganization of money to keep it in balance. 
approval of letter of resignation from Misty Hunter, letter of retirement from uh, Ms. Kathy Sales, letter of retirement from Stephen Henson. Brandon Cross is Gilham Elementary girls basketball coach. Approval of medical leave for Margie Wilson. Approval of leave for Lisa Day. Approval of medical leave for Patty Ball. And approval of medical leave for Karen Ball. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items? Motion by Wayne Taylor. title was what. Uh, as you can see, uh, these numbers do balance, and as I stated earlier, they're just a reorganization of those months. So, uh, with a motion and a second, everyone in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. New business items. Uh, consider approval of board policy 1.70, which is our school district goals. 5.1, which is personnel goals. Those were supplied. Uh, those are recommendation by recommended by uh, the Tennessee School Board Association. Uh, those were submitted by the uh, policy department. Anybody have any questions on those? Okay. And second, uh, consider approval of five cent increase on the particle pay scale. Uh, Discuss this in detail. Is there a motion to approve the new business items? I'll make that motion. I'll second. There's a motion by Rick Dotson and a second by Wayne Taylor. Is there any discussion? Um, I was wanting to ask Dr. Holman and Heather how that would impact our budget. They run the teachers. Sure. Heather, if you'd like to address that, that's fine. Yes, I have um, put the pay raise into the budget and it's going to make us it's a $122,000 difference in the budget from last year to this year. And um, that will make us over on the budget right now, pending numbers that we get from the state and from the county. Is that effective immediately or when? No, this will go in effect in July. Yeah, okay. So it'll be the next school year. Yeah. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Bruce Hudding? Yes. Mike Hayes? Yes. Wayne Taylor? Yes. William Apston? Yes. Larry Looper? Yes. Mitch Stonecipher? Yes. Rick Dotson? Yes. Jarman Hicks? I have a conflict in this. <coughs> I vote yes. I do too. I need to restate mine. I do have a topic uh, before we get into our special recognition. Uh, Ms. Melton, uh, Dr. Homer and I uh, met earlier uh, putting our budget together with the pre preliminary numbers. Uh, we will have to vote on that preliminary budget next month. Uh, all you guys will be supplied a copy of that tonight before you leave. Um, the plan is, as Ms. Melton said, uh, is to cover the deficit out of our fund balance because the total numbers aren't in yet. So in our preliminary budget, we'll take that money from the fund balance and we balance the budget. So it will be a balanced budget whenever it goes to the county commission. And everybody will get a copy of that tonight. And it'll be on next month's agenda for approval. So, uh, on to our special <coughs> recognition, uh, Ms. Islander, OCEA. 
Good evening. I don't have much tonight. Just wanted to thank y'all for your support in this unprecedented school year. I think all the teachers are really glad that we have made it into the final stretch. We're about to hit spring break, and then after that, we've got our days numbered until, and so looking forward to a normal school year next year. Let's all cross our fingers and say our prayers that we get normal back next year. Thank you. I couldn't agree more with that. Uh, now, uh, next, uh, we've invited our school <coughs> nurses uh, to be with us tonight. Um, I guess it, <coughs> they do deserve a special recognition uh, for the year that they've had. Uh, on behalf, not only myself, but the entire board, we do appreciate what you do. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine the job that you do with as many children that you see every day. So uh, we do appreciate you guys. Um, you want to do this stuff or this stuff? I've got something I'd like to read. Uh, a couple of the supervisors uh, wrote this up and I, and I thought it was very fitting. Uh, this evening, we'd like to take a few moments to recognize uh, the dedication and effort to our local health care professionals. Uh, it is safe to say that uh, this has been an unprecedented time, and these ladies have gone above and beyond to answer uh, what was to answer what was asked of them. Uh, from handing out meals at the beginning of the pandemic to uh, hours of contract contact tracing calls, both late at night and on the weekends. Uh, and researching the latest CDC guidelines, answering phone calls and questions from school teachers at all hours of the day and night, and I made some of those night calls, by the way, uh, and providing an overall leadership to help maintain a sense of hope and encouragement. And I can't understand, I can't under, I can't, as, in, uh, let me see, what am I trying to say? I can't express, thank you, Mr. Dark, I can't express that enough. Ladies, you all were such a great help. You really were. Uh, when this was new and this was all beginning, we would uh, we would be we would get stressed awfully easy, and then we would call you, and, and it really made a ton of difference. So, uh, you all did all this extra work, all while maintaining and doing your regular duties, and we really appreciate that. At this time, we'd like to recognize the school nurses, um, and we have uh, almost something for you, Tammy Nemo. Get a picture of you before you leave as well. Cindy Sales. Come up around here. Yeah. <clears throat> Rebecca Gunn. Rhonda Smith. And then lead nurse is uh, Marcy Matthews. Oh, yeah. All together. All together. All together. Uh, 
we have a, something a little different. We thought that uh, uh, Andy Langford might like something besides a rose, so we have you a little something different. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, could you all come up and we'll get you a picture of you all as well? She might be coming, so get up here, Becca. Rebecca Vaughn. Rebecca Vaughn. Rebecca Vaughn. Rebecca, I had you in school, and I'm so glad you came. Thank you. 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 Thank you.